The name's Bond, Earth Bond. Jesus, can't share that on the YouTube. Right, today's job is going to be a boiler conversion, BBU to combi. Um, I was supposed to be in the court to arrange it with the customer. It's now quarter past eight and I can't make anybody here. I've tried ringing and ringing and ringing. Um, I don't know what to do now uh, because I've got a van full of boiler and obviously this job this job's booked in for a few days. Um, obviously, obviously I've got to put all TRVs, give it a full flush. Um, sort the whole system out basically we're putting the uh, new boiler in the kitchen new combi um but i can't get in um so i don't know the customer customer was aware it was all booked in i said i'd be there between half seven and quarter to eight um but yeah i just i cannot make anybody here all the curtains are drawn there's no lights on it's to be fair it's an elderly customer i'm not worried about the time i'm worried about the customer um i'm hoping they're okay um you can't get around the back because it's a terrace property um so i'm going to give it another 15 minutes i'm going to give it till half eight um and then i'm just gonna have to go because obviously i can't sit here all day um so yeah it's a it's you know it happens in this job um obviously some people forget and stuff or i'm just hoping they're okay i'm hoping they haven't fallen ill um but yeah i'll, uh, I'll keep you all day so i'll show you this job we've got a worcester 4000 combi going on this wall we need to keep the flue 300 away from the windows i think we can just about get it half measured up we've got a worcester care pack going in with all the chemicals and the filter and everything in there obviously calmax shock arrestor hot and cold are dropping down there the main stop has, stop tap is just there so hot and colds is not an issue we can pick pick these back up obviously cylinder is somewhere up there above the bathroom so all that will come out we'll link the primary through we've got bbu here um pump and everything all this will be coming out we've, we've allowed to extend that boxing down because there will be some pipe work still here um but what i'm going to try and do is get everything um everything in position before we turn the heating off so i'll get the boiler on the wall what i'll do is just put the jig on and i can link across to flush it out with some washing machine hoses so i'll end up i don't know whether to take my flow and turn up yeah into the bathroom i'll have to have a look or oh, this is a this is a timber floor so i might be able to lift it up under here the boiler is going directly below here somewhere in the kitchen one thing we've got to watch is sometimes on the old systems the uh, bathroom radiator would have been done on the primary flow and return <laughs> So it may be that we have to pick this one back up obviously we've got a copper cylinder in here all this will come out and it's gravity flow and return at the minute so you've got 28 coming off the back boiler and then there's just a pump on the heating um obviously when we go through it i'll explain a little bit more but sometimes they would come off the 28 pipe so when you put the hot water on that one will come off i'm not saying it is but sometimes it would have been done like that and that's got the template mounted on the wall what i do is i like to get my jig on the wall first and um, so i just mark a couple of the screws i'm actually going to call this one from outside in so i'll poke one all the way through uh, wherever i put the bit so I just stick that i don't know 12 mil bit all the way through and i core it from outside in because it's red brick i don't want to make a mess in here and we'll start to get some pipe work down my pipe work's going to run underneath underneath this workshop across and then underneath that suspended floor so gas will come along flow return obviously hot and cold i might put my shock arrestor and stuff under there yeah i don't know my cow mag i'll have a look at it Right, I've just temporarily tagged that up on a couple of screws, make sure it's level. What I'll do before I connect the system up or put the boiler on is I'll put washing machine hoses from my, uh, between my cold and my return and then just let it wash out the flow and then link them back across. So basically do a mains flush on the system. Um, it's the best way i find it's the best way i find on these sort of systems these bbus because they will be mucky but what i'll do is get everything else done get all the trvs in get all the pipe work linked through before lifting my boiler on the wall um it's how i do and obviously everybody does things differently but that way no muck or crap goes inside your boiler i get my center clips worked out and then i work everything else from that point if you know you've got your first one right everything else should fall in line go go back there and keep all your keep all your clips and everything level because obviously it just makes everything look way more professional obviously we've got to get a filter we've got to get a filter somewhere in there um so i just have to have a look i might even put the filter below um because i think it might look better so i'll get a row of clips on there and then drop everything else down through the worktop 
obviously don't use hammer on tiles because you'll just break them. You're normally all right with a normal masonry bit, but just don't use them on hammer. The chances of matching these tiles up would be slim to none anyway. Once you've gone through the tile, you're all right. Just got to be careful it don't slip as well. No, you're better with a proper towel than it in the van, innit? We'll be alright. Just nip them up with a normal screwdriver. Well, that's got the clips on what i'll do now is just drop legs down underneath this worktop so i'm probably going to put all my bits and bobs under there uh keep my filter at the back or something i'm sure the condensed one as well obviously that's going to have to go across into the sink waste the prv will probably just drill out there somewhere in a bit um but i want to try and get the pipes tuck across and we'll have to get that floor up in there and obviously the gas has got to come through there the flow return and stuff um as i've already said hot and cold we'll get into this unit here obviously because we've not put the boiler on yet we can feed longer lengths in which also makes it easier for us I just prepped all my 22 mil ones off. I'll get all them, all these three soldered up, and then I just drop my 15s through. Right, that's got them flow returns, hot and cold, and gas drop through. Uh, I've got obviously a little bit of jiggery pokery to do under here now with some hot and colds going into that unit and gas and flow return going along. But I'll get all my holes drilled. I might even lift a bit of floor up in there. Um, have a look what we're going to do. Obviously, I've still got cow mag and shock arrestor and stuff wherever I put them. Um, maybe I haven't brought them in yet to put on. But yeah, we need a cow mag and a shock arrestor on there. Because obviously we're in a hard water area and I always put shock resters on regardless if there's a water meter I just put them on because majority of people do have water meters now. This here would have been the old ventilation for the BBU. Um, obviously we don't need need any now. The fire's coming out as well. We're going to put an electric fire in. Um, but yeah, see what sort of void we've got underneath there. The carpet's stuck down. Let's see if I can get that carpet up. Hell of a draft coming through there. We'll have a look, where is it? There is a big void. I'm hoping to bring my heating pipes through. Through there somewhere. We'll have a look. So I'm hoping to get my pipes through here. Gas, I'm going to have to slide along. I'll probably cut another hole in the middle so I can knock it across because the gas meter is through on the other side. So I need to get 22. There's that 15 mil one clipped on that skirting, which will be the gas of the BBU. And then obviously, right there, we'll need to put a TRV on. And we'll over here. These ones here are our pumped, so they'll be heating. That 15 mil one is probably feeding that rad behind me and possibly the one in the lounge. There's only like five rads on this system. So we need to pick that one back up. That is the return. Again, with the return dropping down to the downstairs leg, that'll be upstairs. As I say, I'm gonna box this in in this corner because I can't lose these pipes here. Um, and they are there, they've been the old primary flow. So that'd be the old primary flow. That'd be the old primary return with the drain off tap on and say that bathroom rad might be off that. Uh, obviously we're having new controls, we don't do the old Randall, well it's a Danfoss, it's been changed originally, it could have been a Randall. Um, but I'm leaving all this on so the customer's still got heating, so we'll have to upgrade this gas um, right through. It is 22 where it leaves the meter, but somewhere it must be reduced to 15. 
What I'm going to do, this is a little bit controversial um, because your gas pipe should technically take the shortest route possible through the wall. But what I want to try and do is drill down at a slight angle to land myself in that floor. Obviously, I'm going to sleeve it. It's not a cavity wall anyway. Um, it is a, technically, I'm doing that a little bit wrong, but I don't really want to see any pipe work this side. And it won't be the worst thing you'll ever see a gas pipe done as. Um, it is a little bit naughty, but that's how I'm going to do it because I don't want to see any pipe work. They say it will be sleeved, but the gas regs do say your gas pipe should take the shortest route possible through the wall. But technically, that is the shortest route possible if I don't want to see the pipe. So, mm, a bit of a grey one. That's how I'm doing it. Don't you don't have to copy me. Obviously, I'm not asking anybody to copy me anyway. This is a uh, this is just a day in my life type thing. But yeah, as long sometimes as long as you know you're doing it wrong, does that make it all right? I don't know. But that's how I'm doing it. As you can see, I've only gone at the slightest of angles anyway now, just to get me. Well, you probably can't. Can you see? Let's take under there. My drill bit's there. So the other two I'll have to go this side of that timber, but it's not the end of the world. And I say, what I'm going to do is clip along there, pick them up, hot and cold into the unit, flow returning gas across here. And I'll try and do them in square bends as well, especially the gas, just to sweep it. And then we're a pretty straight run across. I should have said that floor there is solid, um, so I would have took them underneath, but obviously I can't. I know somebody will be thinking it, but yeah. Right, I'm just getting all my pipe work sleeved through. Obviously, it's critically important with gas and with flow and return. Um, it just basically stops any brick or anything coming into contact with copper. So I'm just going to pull a slight bend on that and then pull a bend up to the other end and just get that in. Did we guess it right? And if it wants a tiny little bit more on the bend, like that, pop, pop a clip across there, pull bend at the other end, and that's fine. Obviously, the reason we use pull bends on gas is to obviously restrict the flow, to not restrict the flow, not to restrict the flow. What am I on about? Um, obviously, it saves on fittings as well and time, but yeah, that is the main reason because obviously a pull bend is less restrictive you imagine a car going down the motorway and a slow bend he's got to slow down less um to get around the corner same with gas pipes so you can keep your speed up Obviously, we don't flux the inside of the fitting on gas. I don't generally do on any fitting now. I always do my gas first just because it's the one you don't want the bends on, whereas I can cross over the firm turn. But the gas, I don't want to put any extra length, length on it, if that makes sense. Right, so that's got that pipe work through into here. I just need to connect it up onto the boiler. You can just see, or can you? You can just see that gas one there. Oh, we can get onto that. Um, so yeah, I just need to get them connected up onto there. I'll put the filter underneath, and then the, that one will just go straight in. So not too bad. I just got to probably have to. Well, obviously I'm going to have to lag these pipes under this floor, um, but I'll have to lift a piece up in the middle to get some clips across. And ideally, I want the flow return sort of over there, and then the gas over in that corner if we can. So I've got a Worcester Mini filter to put on this system. Uh, I think we've got seven radiators. I think there's th uh, four upstairs and three downstairs. So there's not many, this would be absolutely fine. I'm thinking about mounting it just under there, out of the way. I'll probably 45 that out, because it's a bit tight on that corner. And then we've just got to cross over that one, hot and cold. So I'll bring out from the back of the unit through, same with the condense when I get that done. Um, but yeah, going all right. If I can get across there and get them ready to join up for tomorrow, 
I'll be fairly happy today. Obviously, I've still got the flush and everything to do the TRVs, but I can strip it, strip all the cylinder and stuff out last. I've just got to get, you know, the bulk of it in. Just getting my hot and cold tucked through into the sink unit, ready to connect up tomorrow or whenever we do it. Depending on where we get on, of course. That's got this area all tidied up and put back together. I know I've still got a bit of mess to make the PRV and the flue oil and stuff to do, but I like to get areas done. So that pipe was all took across there into the boiler, into the unit, ready, well, ready to connect up under the unit, really. They're going to be a little bit awkward. Um, probably have to cut the back out of the unit, but yeah. Worst case scenario, I can just hold them from this side here, but we'll cross that bridge in a bit. Um, so yeah, what I want to try and do is get them across here and start putting some of this floor back down. I know I'll have to have them back up to lag it, but the Sparky's probably got to get underneath to get a spear in. But yeah, we're sorting it. So this gas is 22 just on the other side of that wall. Um, they've reduced it down. Obviously at one point the old meter would have been in here. I don't know why we've got a bit of 22, a bit of 15. I don't know, but I'm gonna get a 22 pipe. I was gonna take it over the floor, but that bit's solid. So I just have to clip it where the old one was clipped, but obviously in the 22 mil. And then the ball is just literally over there. So it'll be a straight run across. There'll probably be a square bend, square bend, and then straight through there onto the 22. And the gas meter is just on the other side. Um, that's how it's got to have to go on this one. And obviously, we will sleeve our pipe. There's a big enough hole to get a 22 through anyway. I'll try and get away with that cable. The electrician's coming anyway. Um, so we'll have a look at that. I don't know what that's feeding. Oh, it's feeding into the boiler anyway. So we might be able to do away with that one, uh, which will be better because then it's not near the gas pipe. What I like to do under the floor is label all my gas up. I won't do that though until I've tightened it, tested it all, because in theory, if you've got a pinhole or something like that in your in your pipe, it could seal it. So don't don't label it up till the end. Uh, all I've done is sweat it. I caught the side of that joist a little bit, but I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. It's just a little bit tricky in that corner. Um, so I'm going to pull them back the same, and then literally lift a piece up over there somewhere. I'll have to shift all this over that way, and then connect on down here. Proper in copper. No, you can't beat copper under the floors. You get that many mice in that tube of plastic fittings, it would have been quicker in plastic. What I'm going to do is just put some logins across. I've got some 3 by 2 in the van, uh, just to support the pipes. I can clip it as well. And so what I'll do is leave, I'll have to put the floor back down tonight, but I can just leave it so I can lag the pipes. Obviously not screw it down. I'm going to turn my GoPro off there, because it's about flat. Right, I've moved everything across. My pipe should be down here. I've slid them, slid them this way. Uh, there is actually a wall with a noggin in the middle. So it's roughly somewhere in the middle, so I might even be able to reach across. Um, what I'm aiming for is basically get them over across to this side and then I can jig them all in from here. But yeah, just a case of moving stuff backwards and forwards, but you know how it is. <laughs> No pipes. Went a bit deep there, but pipes then. Oh one there. Why I've got the wrong side. There's one look. Oh, you know what I've done? Should have been over there. Don't matter. I can get them though. And my gas is just here. How have I done that then? What a mistake, don't matter. So these are my flow and returns coming across. I can just about get to them, which is good without lifting any more boards up. I mean, in theory, I could lift that one up, but it's just more carpet. I say what I'll do is I'll put another brace across here as well, just to make sure they're all fully supported. These are my heating pipes here coming across, obviously feeding that rad in there, that rad in the lounge, and then the other one. In theory, I could pick them up there. I think 15 mil would be absolutely ample. There's three rads upstairs. One of them's only a fairly smallish one. And it was 22 where it goes up. Obviously we need to dig around this pipe 
jig around these pipes here anyway. I might I might just bring 22 to the corner, undecided, it might be better. Um, but anyway, I've got to get a gas across here, and then that gas is just gonna have to, we're just gonna have to clip it back how it was. Not much we can do with that, being a solid floor there. And then all we need to pick up here, well, we might have to join the flow and return here, depending if that bathroom radiator is on the primary circuit. Um, but we need to basically pick this one up here. This will be the, well, they've actually put the pump on the return. That's the return. It don't make a jot, a jot of difference to us. And that's the flow. Obviously, we're going to put bi-directional valves on anyway, so it won't make any difference. Um, but yeah, so I'll have to have a think about that. But if I can just get stuff brought along ready to connect up, I can do all my sort of connections in a day. Right, so there my flow and return in. I'm going to sleep on this. I don't know whether to take them across there or not yet. I think it would be okay, but I don't know. I'll have a think about it. Um, but the gas, I'm definitely going to get across there and through. So, yeah, we'll get that bit done next. Get this floor put back down. And that's pretty much going to be it for today. I mean, I can work on a little bit more on the boiler, get the PRV and that through. I just don't want to leave floors up too late in the day. You know what it's like. Again, I'm pulling what I can on the gas just so it doesn't restrict the flow. So that piece is going to go underneath there uh, and then across and I put another noggin in just to support that gas pipe that one does I'll keep it well down so there's absolutely no risk that that's ever going to get screwed or damaged well you don't anyway you'd have to use an 18 inch screw on that wouldn't you <laughs> somewhere with the gas. Perfect. Nothing special. Spin that around. Lift that up. And then just got to connect it onto the air, but we'll blow down that part and make sure it's got no muck in it. It's dropping everything. I lost my torch on a job the other day. One of my Makita ones with the battery in and I just found that under the floor. Obviously the last plumber would have been cursing when he lost that. Right, gas is just poking up through the floor for me. I couldn't get it any tighter because there's a main joist there. Um, but that'll have to be fine. So tomorrow, I'm going to get everything drained down, get the gas off, get the fire out. As I say, it's electric fire going back in there and start to get things joined up. I say, before I hang the boiler, what I'm going to do is I'll connect the cold and the hot in and then I'm just going to link, well, I can put the fill loop in and link a washing machine hose um, across the two so I can just leave the fill loop open and wash it all out before I connect it onto the boiler. That's the plan anyway. So... That's tomorrow's project. So I've still got a little bit of time left today, so I might have a look at getting the shock arrestor and stuff done down there. But I want to get that put back together for the customer. So under the sink, I'm going to put a scale mag and a shock arrestor on the cold. That's the shock arrestor. All that does, oh, I've never seen one to 15 mil before, ever. Have you ever seen one to 15 mil? Because I haven't. Um, normally you have to get a T like that. They're so much better to 15 mil. You learn something every day, don't you? Um, but yeah, I'm going to put that on the cold. What that does, if there's a water meter, I'm not sure if there's a water meter on this property or not, um, but I'll put them on it anyway. It basically protects the hydraulic block. Um, and obviously, cow mag is just for um, stopping any scale. Uh, it's magnetic. It basically realigns the particles in the water. So we pop that on, pop one of them on, auto manufacturer's instructions then. But yeah, I like that chamfered as well to take an olive so it's not like somebody's just putting an olive on there but yeah i don't know that's the one they've sent um it actually makes sense don't it to be straight to 15 mil copper rather than using one of them i just thought i'd fit the fill link uh, last thing tonight um so for some reason it don't come with it on the 4000 to fill it up all you've got to do is hold that down uh, there's got an air gap inside there because technically fill loops should be left connected for water eggs so i think there must be like a little chamber inside there that releases a little bit of water uh, just how it gets over it so it's got a physical air gap in between the two yeah you cold and you return so yeah that's going to be it for today and then we'll pick this back up tomorrow i'll just quickly run through what pipe work we've got here this, that one is vent off the heat and that one's cold feed it's done slightly weird normally you'd expect that cold feed to be dropped onto the primary return um down there but it 
obviously I can't really see it, but that's definitely the cold feed to the heat in. That one there will remain up to the tank, so we'll have to blank that off as low as we can when we get the cylinder out. That one is tank cold feed to the cylinder, uh, so that one will be completely done away with. Uh, and that one is vent, and that one is hot draw off, so again we'll have to cap that low down as we can. Uh, so all of this will be done away with, and yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. Obviously I can't, I can't see if that radiator comes off the primary circuit, but... It's something you just got to watch out for. Right, we're back here today. Let's get this watch off. Oh, it's going to be one of them days. Obviously, this being a terrace house, it'd be on a shared supply, so we're hoping that's going to work. Yeah, we're good, I think. If not, we'll have to just turn the row off. It's not the end of the world, but not half seven in the morning, probably. So we'll get everything draining down this morning. I think cold's actually on the right, we'll just make sure that cold, sorry, cold's on the left. Make sure that cold's actually turned off. Obviously I've got my pipe work to join up under this sink. Right, that cold's turned off so we'll get the hot open. And that'll drain the, that'll drain the tank in the roof but it won't drain the cylinder. I'm just going to put a cap end on there just for a minute. That's the cold main going up into the tank. So if we get that one capped off, I will be capping it down lower. It just means I can get stuff stripped out then. Right, that's got that one capped. I'm just going to pop a speed fit one on there just because that pipe's dripping. So that's the one that feeds the tank. So effectively, all this is disconnected now from the system. We still need to drain this copper cylinder out. Um, all I'll do with that is siphon it out. So I can get the heating drain now as well. Um, and I'll let empty everything down. Let's get this drain in. Zero percent chance of this working, but I'll give it a go. It is working. I took the carpet off just because I need to be back in this corner anyway. So all that's doing is draining all the heating down and the backboard and everything out. That's got the hot water draining down as well. The tank on the roof. And this should be running out here. It is a bit. I see if I can get that running a bit better. Well, I've got to try and get these hot and colds connected into this pipe work. Um, obviously, I've got hot and colds coming across there, and I'm going to try and do away with this old flexi. What I'm probably going to have to do is cut, cut the pipe with this this side, and just reroute it in, and obviously leave myself a T. Um, the the cold is up there. Oh, sorry, that's the hot because it's hot on the right on this. I might just be able to sneak onto that. It's going to be awkward. It might just pay me to cut it off there. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to leave. Well, I can't obviously join onto that anyway. And these have got a tendency to split. So I just replace it onto the thing, I think. There's a socket there, and obviously that's a Yorkshire tea. Awkward oh, one. Obviously, there's no movement on the pipe, buried in the wall. I think what I'm going to try and do. and bring new pipe work through. The name's 
bond. Earth bond. We're gonna use some new flexes on this. Just a bit easy because it's hard to get to. Oh, I still can't get to it now. The only ones we've got on the van are a bit long. back around and bring a new cold through I'm just going to leave a, a tee down there somewhere for myself right so I brought a new piece of pipe through there what I'm going to do is just put a tee looking down probably put a square bend and then a flexi uh, onto there somehow I shorten that back a little bit actually if I can yeah I think it'll go anyway I suppose I could put a nice air valve on that circuit as well if I wanted to but at least it's better than it was. So we'll get this connected, we'll get the coal connected, and then we'll get that all done. Right, so I was tempted to flip it back around from cold on the right, but I think the customer's got so used to having it as cold on the left, I think it'll cause me more problems, so I'll just leave it as it was. This one's all done, but at least it's a lot better than it was before. If that flexi you'd ever leave, you'd be in trouble, you know. Right, that's got the cold connected in. Um, in theory, I could get the water back on there, but I might just get the hot done. I know I've done cold on the left, but it's how it was before, and I think the customer will probably be used to that. I don't know if I can sneak a tea in there. The pipe's a little bit dented there. I'll see what I can do. Right, I've got them connected in. The hot, I swung back down the bottom and then back up. Uh, I've just put flexes on. Uh, I know it's not the best, but at least if that tap, tap ever goes wrong, you've got half a chance rather than having them buried in the wall. Um, so yeah, that's how I've done it anyway. Not the best bit of plumbing you'll ever see, but it's better than it was and they're all connected in. You can actually have the cold water back on now. Because oh. obviously we've got the uh, caps in the airing cupboard. We'll need it off again at some point. But... That looks alright. I've still got to try and sneak the condense in there yet, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. But we'll uh, one problem at a time. Right, I'm going to get this cylinder draining down next. Um, just because obviously we've got the cold. Oh, back on, no chance of doing that, am I? Yeah. All one-way skin of So I'm going to try and get that connection out the top. See if it will spin or break. Oh. Oh, yeah. I need to put the camera down. I'm going to spin that out and get this siphoned out. Right, all I do, piece of copper, hose pipe, and then I'm just going to siphon that out. Don't bother with the drain off taps, because they ain't going to work. I can guarantee you're going to cause yourself more problems using that. Um, all I've got to do here and then, in here, is then cap that cap that hot off, lower down. I might even be able to get, yeah, that, that is hot coming out the top. That one, I'll have to cap that lower down somewhere where we can, and then cap that cold all the way back. I don't think that this radiator in the bathroom comes off this primary circuit, but what I might be able to do is blow down it. Obviously, all this coil in everything's drained uh, now as well. So get this out, and then I'm going to get the heating connected in. Beautiful. If I wanted to do it quick, I would normally take the hose downstairs, but I'm not bothered if that takes all day. Because um, it's not it's not hurting me, it's not affecting me, if that makes sense. So we just let that drain slowly um, while we get everything else connected in. The old bike boiler were leaking gas. I've literally just capped it off. I did a tightness test before I started, before I joined into the existing, and it was dropping like a stone. It's holding steady now. So yeah, it just goes to show, doesn't it? Honestly, it was whew, straight down. Don't cut some of this out. We don't need.
off. You have to split the gas at the bottom. This is your back boiler. Um, these are your connections. One of them would have been pumped flow, one of them's gravity flow. Um, that's an injection tee, that's what they always used to use on the return. I believe it's called an injection tee. I mean, these are a little bit before my time, and then obviously, you've got your flue going up. Um, so, yeah, that's what it is. Pretty basic thing. Obviously, fire goes on the front, so this is all drained down now. So, we can, we can whip it out, um, but yeah, that's what it is. Out. See, there's an arrow on that tee, I'm sure they call them injection tees. Gas, just the electrics disconnecting this lot. Will I'll pull forward once I get it off the flue. Off and yeah, that's that one might still be connected to there. Um, but yeah, at least that's got out of the way. So I've got an electric fire going on here anyway, and we'll have to vent it behind so we don't get condensation rope. Yeah. Gas pipe won't sleep, was it? But not an issue now. Right, that's got all the back boiler and all the fire and everything ripped out. I've linked the heating pipes through as well. We've still got to finish off the gas run down that side. But what I'm going to do now is go around and put all the TRVs on. That way I can blank that cold off. This cold, this cold is live to the isolation valve. Blank that one off. Um, and then put a hose on my flow and just do a mains flush on the system. It's the best way I find of getting all the crap out before we connect the boiler on. Um, that's how I'm going to do it anyway. So once we've got all the rad valves done, we can literally start flushing then. Obviously it is a requirement to fit TRVs on systems now. I always used to think it was a requirement, but they actually put it into, into law. Um, so yeah, you technically you shouldn't change your boiler unless there's a TRV fitted now. I think it used to be a standard. We always used to do it anyway, or most, most installers would, because it just makes sense. Um, but yeah, obviously I'm not going to film every one of these, because the video will be about 3 million hours long. Uh, so for you, it'll look like 5 seconds. It only takes me a minute to change these anyway. Get the tail pasted up. And yeah, I'll just fast forward the video. lock shield drain off on one of the downstairs ones because obviously I've lost my drain off tap and it was on the boiler down there so we'll get that one probably that one through there near the door right I've been around and put all the TRVs and all the radiators that gives me full control for when I'm flushing the system obviously I can just turn I can turn them all off and just leave one on at a time I'm actually going to do this in a separate video though because this video is more about the pipe work and the installation of the boiler rather than the flush it's just going to be too long um, all I'm going to do so obviously I've got mains water onto this now. I'm going to blank that off with a half inch cap, 
blank that one off with a three quarter cap and put a hose on there, a washing machine hose straight onto there and then just flush one radiator at a time with the mains. Um, that's how I do these before I connect them on and what I'm going to do is a separate video on that just so this video doesn't become too long winded. Um, but yeah, once we've done that, well while that's doing that I'm going to get the flue hole cord uh, and then we can get the boiler set on and that's how I like to do these and then if if what I'll do is I'll check the filter at the end. If it's still mucky, I'll get my magna cleanser on there as well. But normally, this does get the majority of the rubbish out of the system, which is important before we connect the new boiler on. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit like a thorough flush, but I'm just doing it with the mains and then straight out. the orange thing off so I can still get it out um, they're just heavy but it looks all right the floor will be perfect for us as well You want to save them washers because they're about, I think they're about four for each if you get them direct from Worcester. Um, but obviously, you get a spare one when you fit them. There's already one on the condensed strip, so that just. They just slide in and then to release them, you just pull them to the side. So, condensed hose, I've already drilled the PRV out of the wall, so I've just got to get that on there uh, with the washer thing. And yeah, it's pretty much that and done. Right, that's got the flue all connected. Um, say what you want about Worcester, but they are one of the quickest flues uh, to fit. Obviously, telescopic, straight through the wall job done. Right, I'll show you this. I'm capping this off. Um, see that olive on there? It's loose, it's because it's a three quarter pipe. That's a three quarter olive. So that just goes on there nicely and that will paste up. I might cap this a little bit further back yet, but for the time being I just want to get filled up because uh, I'm a little bit under pressure today. Oh, to be honest, I've got the mother of all headaches. Um, electrician's here just wearing the boiler. I've still got... Still got all pipes to lag, um, fill up, test it. It was a late one last night, but we get through. So we'll just get that there for a minute. I'm going to cap that cold further down as well, but I need to turn the water off for that. Um, but yeah, all this is stripped out now. I just hope that the old primary circuit didn't come off the tower rail, but we're about to find out. Some dirty magazines there, but oh Jesus, can't share that on the engine. Get that cold on, shut that box out. Up. I'm still filling. Where's it gone? When you're filling these up, just wang a screwdriver across, uh, just hold it open when you're bleeding the rads. So, I mean, well, it'll need a little bit more in here, but that'll do for a minute. I'll just keep my eye on the pressure then all day. Just doing my final tightness test on my gas now, I've got everything connected through. So I don't want any drop on this, it should be good. 
Well, I've just struck the thing up. I'm just checking inlet pressure to make sure I've got the correct working pressure. Uh, at the minute we are looking okay, but we're only on heating. I can put it in maximum. I need to turn that flow temperature down yet as well. So this is put the boiler in, max rate. Okay. The max. Gas pressure is 20, which is fine. So I've just got Jacob um, coming to get me hand with the commission in, uh, just for his gas portfolio really. So that's, we're just doing max and min, and we're just running through everything. We're gonna do flow rate next, aren't we? Uh, we get you to do a gas rate as well. But yeah, we're getting there. We've already done inlet pressure on max fire. So yeah, looking all right. We just set it on min. So flick it back on max, it's just that one. The question is, is it going in the rubbish or is it going back in the van? It's close, oh, isn't it? Oh, oh, <laughs> you can't, oh, no. It's going back in the van, isn't it? So that's it, that's the whole job finished. I've uh, been around to see all the workshop. Uh, we've got all the spare and everything in there. Um, so yeah, I haven't got much footage today. I've just got a massive headache, as I said a minute ago. Um, but yeah, Jacob came and gave me a hand just to commission everything up. We've been around balanced all the system. Christmas happy, we showed them how to use it. So yeah, it's probably gonna be the end of the video. I'm about done in. But yeah, I'll, be, I'll come back. We'll be back stronger. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.